Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to today's live broadcast, Fish Welfare, Stress Pathology Handling and Managing. I am Marcel Perregentil, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. We have a few announcements to make before we get started. This webcast is designed to be interactive, and we encourage you to ask as many questions as you, as you want to. Uh, you can submit your questions by typing them in the Q&A box which can be found by clicking on the green Q&A button at the lower left of the presentation window. We'll try to answer all the questions that we can. You can enlarge the slide window by clicking on the screen icon in the lower right hand corner of the slide window. If you have any technical problems viewing or hearing this presentation, please click on the support button at the top right of your presentation window or submit your problem through the green Q&A lower button on the lower left. I would like to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Juan Ramos. Dr. Ramos is the Aquatic Animal Supervisor at the Barcelona Biomedical Research Park. For the past year, he has been setting up the cryopreservation service for zebrafish sperm, uh, the uh, PRBB. I will now turn it over to Dr. Ramos for his presentation. Dr. Ramos, thank you very much for agreeing to this presentation. I will pass the presentation to you. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Uh, good afternoon from, from Barcelona. I will try to explain with this presentation different items that are related with, with fish welfare. So for that, I divided my presentation in four main parts. The first of all is, is going to explain which, what is a fish and what are the main differences between fish and mammals, which kind of requirements do they need to do their maintenance. Afterwards, we are going to talk just a little bit about what we call a welfare or malestar that is related with stress and pathology. And finally, we, we have like an example of working with fish and taking care of them. That is the zebra fish that, as you will know, is the star of, of the fish research. So we are working with fish and nowadays the people is taking more concern about uh, what is going on with with animals and the beings. So the fish are not an exception of all that. So the society uh, wants to, to keep their animals better. So also in their research, the law is always falling, following the the people and the society. So the last European law takes in account the, the fish as a animal research and also include the first invertebrate as an animal research, that is the octopus. So when we think in fish research, most of you can think in, in what we know as a fish uh, research with bio research that mainly is the zebra fish and another species like the balloon fish or maybe the guppy or the metaca are, using, are used also in bio research. But there is an, another huge field that is the, the aquaculture items or that are related with the fish. In Spain, we are a power in, in fish research in aquaculture items. So we, we can have many, many facilities that are working with, with these species. So this facility must, must have a lot of, a lot of tanks and must be adapted to many, many kinds of fishes. So <clears throat> first of all, we, we must define what is welfare. And you can find out that there are many, many definitions going around. Uh, but I choose this one that is for the Farm Animal Welfare Committee that is located in the United Kingdom. And mainly it says that it must be freedom for different things, freedom from harm, the and thirst, uh, freedom for discomfort, from pain and injury, and freedom to express their normal behavior. 
Also, there must be freedom, or we must avoid what we what I call uh, the unwelfare. But if you think in, in fees, this definition ha is not directly translated to them, so we must adapt them. If we are working with fees, uh, as Isabel Market said, the worst thing for a fees is treating them like human. That means that we have to change our point of view or not, and also our, our knowledge about taking care of animals because they are more interested in other things and they need other things than the mammals or other vertebrates. So first of all, we have to take in account that the fish are aquatic animals, so we have uh, to take care about the water. Yeah, the water quality is really important, but also the, the dynamics, the way that is going to, to, to flow the water around the tank and, and around the life support system. Also, the tank will have a lot of importance, a great importance, because it will allow the fish to have their normal behavior, and also it will handle more, more than one fish, so we, we can set different kind of densities or populations. Also, we, we should take care about the diet and the food well, uh, that we are going to, to give to our animals and the way that we are going to handle them. Of course, we should avoid uh, all items related with our welfare, so we have to know which kind of things are, are making our fish stressed. Also, we can we, we have a, a bibliography review, but we have to take in account also the requirements made by law. Uh, I will explain my, my point of view that is from Spain, Europe. So in, in Europe, we have a new, almost a new law for research with animals, and this is the transposition for the Spanish law. I will translate to you, but it says something that, like that, the fees should be fine, so nothing particular. You must give the proper water, the proper oxygen, the water temperature, these kind of things. But nothing is really is really on the tile, and we can think that this kind of law has no sense, but it has a lot of sense. But we are because we are talking about fees. So what happened with fish? Fish uh, are a huge group of animals that has more diversity than the other vertebrates. So if we can think in, in a kind of living, the fish will have this. So we have different adaptation for, for the ecology. So we can find uh, fish that are lonely, gregarious, territorial, pelagic, bentonic, unisexual, hermaphrodite, with gene re respiration, with cutaneous respiration, with external reproduction, with internal one. So most of, of the, the way of living, they will be adapted to. So if we are working with fish, we can just say fish, so we must specify which kind of species are we working with. So after we know which kind of species are we are working with, we must make a bibliography review and find out which kind of uh, parameters or recommendations are set up. Also, we can go to the aquaculture techniques or the public aquarium ones that should have a lot of information about taking care of the animals or, or fish. We should avoid uh, all kind of Disney referees or uh, human way of thinking and translate our, our brain to a fish mode. <clears throat> uh, we, are, we don't have to go in panic because, of course, the, the, the fish has a common characteristics. They most, mostly of them are ectodermic, so they are cold blooded. So this means that the metabolism rate will be directly in relation with the water temperature. Also, the limbs are modified in fins, so they, they can swim in the water. The skin will be covered by, by scales as an armor, and this will protect against different things. The skeleton is made by bone or cartilage, and the respiration will be made by gills. They have a, a simple circulation and complete. That means that the heart will push the, the blood 
from from the heart to the genes and afterwards to the to the body. There is not going to be a double circulation as the mammals. Also, the reproduction will be external, except in the, the sharks and other cartilagus fish. So when we are thinking in fish, we have to think in this kind of animals that includes the jowlis group, that are the mixinins and the lampreys, the cartilagus fish, that are the sharks, the chimeras and the rays, and also the bony fish, that are the most common one, as the moon, moon fish or the zebra fish or also the abyssal fish. <clears throat> so when we look to, to the fish, we can see that they have many shapes and these shapes are adapted to the way of, of swimming. So the limbs will be also related about that. Also the mouth and the teeth will, will be adapted to their ecology and the way of eating. So we can find many kinds of mouths in different positions and with different kind of, of teeth. Also, we can find a special sensory system that is presented in aquatic animals, especially in, in fish, that is the lateral line. This lateral line, we can see a, like a line going along the, the body of the fish that is made by, by points. This lateral line uh, will, have, will act as, as a radar, like, like the bats one, but in a passive way. That means that they are not going to make a noise and catch it, they are going just to catch the movements of the, of the water. So we have to take in account this sensory system because uh, if we are going to, to fish them with a net, we should make a slow movement so they will not interpret this as a, as a attack for them. Also, they have a swimming bladder that is going to allow them to move along the water column, going up and down without spending energy. Uh, also, the skin is, is really different from other mammals, for other animals, and it has many parts. Uh, the skin will act as a, a barrier against chemical and biological agents and also will help for the osmoregulation of the fish. It will have also uh, electric organs and poison glands. Uh, the mucus that is over the skin will help for the hydrodynamics because it will decrease the, the, <coughs> the, the force that are between the, the water, the friction that is between the water and the and the body. So this skin is divided in many parts. The first part, the external one, will be the cuticle that is specially in, in, a, in a monologic function and will have a lot of compounds for that. Uh, below that, we can find the, the epidermis that is going to be especially in secreting mucus. This mucus will act as a proper barrier and also will help for the hydrodynamics, so decreasing the friction of the water and the body. Uh, also inside of this mucus, we can find out uh, some, some immunologic uh, cells as the lymphocytes and the macrophagus. Beneath the, the epidermis, we will find the basal membrane that is dividing the epidermis and the dermis. The dermis that is under, under it uh, will have the, the function of secreting the scales and giving the support for the rest of the skin. The scales are calcificated seeds that are disposed from cranial to caudal uh, in a cranial from to caudal way, and they are overlapping. So we have to take in account uh, the special skin if we are going to handle the fish because we can remove this mucus that is really harmful, harmful for them and also remove the, the scales. So we have to take in account this and try to use uh, wet uh, materials, uh, gloves, and also the proper net. So <clears throat> also it's important to consider different physiology functions as the respiration that is going to work uh, differently from, from the other vertebrates. As you will know, the, the fish are inside of the water and they will pick the, the air from, or the oxygen from the, from the water. 
and the water will have less oxygen and is more viscous and more dense than the, than the air. So they have an, an specialized organ that is the gills that are like pharyngeal bags, four, pharyngeal, four pairs, pairs of pharyngeal bags that are disposed uh, um, in the last part of the oral cavity. These gills will have to, to any gills and these energies will have the filaments that are the functional part of the gill. So the filament will, will release the CO2 and will catch the, the oxygen from the water by diffusion. Uh, they are disposed in cross-current way, so uh, they will have more time to do this, this function. Also in the gills, we can find another kind of cells that are not related with the respiration, that are more related with the osmoregulation, that are the ionicides. These ionicides are, are specialized in making the ionic transport. Also to protect the, the gills from, from different kinds of water, uh, we have the mucus cells that protects the filament from the, from the water. Uh, the way that the fish is going to be related with the, with the water, it has a lot of implication about the small regulation. The small regulation is the way that the animal is going to keep the ionic balance inside of the cell against the, the natural tendency of, 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 of this kind of problem that will equalize the, this difference of ionic pressure. So if we think in fish, we can think, think in fresh water and salt water. We are going to focus in, in the fresh water ones. These, these fish will have more ionic concentration, ion concentration inside of the cells than the water. So uh, they, the natural tendency is going to uh, release some ions from, from the cell and catch uh, some water. So the, the fish will fight against this uh, just putting a, a lot of water outside of his body, making a diluid urine, and also uh, catching the ions from the, from the blood and from the water, using uh, their kidneys and their gills. If we think, uh, on the other hand, if we think in the salt water fish, it's going to be the opposite. So summarizing this osmoregulation, we can say, that they are going to drink like a, like a fish. So to keep our, our fish fine, we should have a, a, a proper facility. These, these aquatic animals have a great dependence of the media and change in the ambient will act directly on the physiological state of them. So these special facilities, the life support system, are specialized to keep uh, as constant and as better the water quality. I usually compare these kind of these facilities with, with a body. The first part will be the, the face, what are we watching every day, uh, what are we interacting with it, that is the tank. This tank uh, will have a lot of importance because it will handle the fish and allows him to make the natural behavior. In the body, we have a blood stream that is going to flow around the, the body. So this, is, this could be related with the water source. The water is going to flow along the pipes that could be our veins and flows directly to the, to the heart. The heart will be the pump of the life support system. So this pump will push uh, the blood or the water around the system. This blood will have uh, some particles that we have to, to remove from it as the kidney, that they are the mechanic, mechanical filters, and also we have some toxic compounds that will, will be uh, processed and decrease this toxicity. This will be the biological filter in the life support system as our liver does. Also, to kill the bad guys that are going around our water, we have an immunologic system uh, that will be almost like the ocean or the UV 
or the chemical filtration. The chemical filtration is going to be almost uh, all the time the chacoral filter that will remove some toxic compounds. If we have some problems with our heart, we can set up some peacemakers that will be automatism or some kind of proofs that are going to send us a lot of information and let us know what is going on in our system. So right now we have uh, a lot of uh, done. We have our species, we have our, our life support system design, but we, we don't have a steel or water inside of it. So we have to decide which kind of water are we going, going working with, and also define the, parameter, the parameters that we should control. Depending on the species and the final objective of the research, we should uh, control uh, more or less uh, parameters. I usually uh, divide the parameters in two kind of groups. The first one are the physical one, because we measure them with proofs, and these ones are the temperature, the salinity, the oxygen, and the pH. We measure these, these parameters every day because they are easy to, to measure and really fast, and the other kind of parameters are the chemical ones that we are going to measure with, with colorimetric tests. And this could, could be, for example, the alkalinity, the hardness, the calcium, the ammonia, different nitrate compounds, the chlorine, the copper, and many more. So we have to define our parameters and we should know that these parameters are not going to be stable all the time. They are going to move, uh, and we expect that this movement will be almost the same. So I make this table that is summarizing this kind of, of things that is going to happen in our life support system with the water quality. And for example, I will explain the pH that, that is a value that is going to be decreased about the respiration that is happening in our, in our water. In our water, we have a lot of respiration rate not just the fish ones, we have a, a, a lot of bacteria inside of, of, of water, and these bacteria are mainly located in the biofilter. So this, this respiration is going to pick oxygen from the water and release CI2. This CI2 in the water will be act as a acid carbonic, so the pH will be decreased. To avoid this, we should put some buffer inside of the water, so we increase a little bit the pH and also the alkalinity. Uh, going back to the bacteria that are making the respiration, these bacteria are located in the biofilter and are responsible of making the nitrogen cycle that is going to decrease a lot the, nitrogen, the toxicity of the nitrogen compounds. So these nitrogen compounds will be the ammonia, nitrate and nitrite, and the nitrite will be accumulative, so we have to remove it, uh, throwing out the, the, the water from our facility. <clears throat> so we have uh, our life support system and the water is running out, but we have to put inside uh, our fish. We still don't know how, how many and how much uh, fish can we put uh, inside of the life support system or in the tank. So for that, we have to define the maintenance density and it's quite hard to define in a general way because we have to take in account many things. First of all, we have to take in account uh, which kind of life support system are we going to have, which kind of filtration, because the filtration is going to handle a concrete uh, number of fees or uh, amount of fees so the, if we put too many fish, the water quality is going to be decreased really, really fast. So <clears throat> it's hard to, to define the, the water quality and uh, about this and also about the species that we are going to use. If we have, uh, for example, turbot, they are going to be more interested in, in the surface. Or if we have a really swimming fish, we, we will use more the, the volume. So depending on these kind of things, we should uh, define the, the density of the animals that we are going to have inside. Also, we can vary a little bit, or we can modify this density by using this uh, kind of refugees or having an homogeneous size of, 
of density, or, 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 or fish, sorry, and using a uh, matrix. So, um, the, the density is really important to be defined, first of all, because it has economical importance. This is not related with animal welfare, it's just with boss welfare. So, let's move to the other importance, that is the ecological one. The ecological implication will be really great because uh, some fish are used to have uh, high densities as seals and other ones prefer to be more lonely in the tank. So depending on the species, we should choose different densities and this density will affect to the ecological way of acting. So it will uh, determine the hierarchy and will increase the, this, this kind of uh, problems and also we, we can see different variations of the way of uh, swimming, also the, the feeding rate, the growing rates, or the reproduction ones. This kind of affections will be, will be measured uh, with, with the cortisol. So we have our fish inside of the tank and we have to feed them, but we don't know, we, don't, we still don't know which kind of food and which kind of amount or which amount uh, should we use. So we should know that the, the fish or the aquatic animals need less calories than, the, than other vertebrates because they don't use energy to control, uh, they don't use the energy to control the temperature. They also uh, need less energy to move around the water and also to secrete the, the ammonia, instead the uric acid or the urea. In the other hand, they, they are used to have a protein metabolism. That means that they don't like to eat pasta or rice, they prefer to eat T-bones or chicken, for, me, for example. So they are adapted to many ways of, of eating, so we must adapt our, our way of feeding to the way of eating. Also, the kind of food that we are going to give them should be adapted. They, ha they usually have an uh, indirect development, so we should choose in the right moment the proper food and the proper way of feeding them. There are also white animals, some, some kind of species or feces are going to be less, less, less hungry, so we have to increase this level of hungry, just making some treats, putting, putting live food inside of the tanks, or maybe using tasty, tasty flavors for them. As we said before, they are called blood animals, so the metabolism is going to be affected by the temperature. As you can see in, in the table, the fish uh, need like twice times the protein than a chicken or three times than a cow. So just summarizing this kind of uh, nutrition issues, we have to take in account that the feeding rate will be determined by different factors. We have uh, endogenous factors that are related with the fish as the species, the age of or development stage, the physiological stage, or the genetics. And on the other hand, uh, we have uh, exogenous factors that are more related with the ambient, as the water temperature or the season, or just related with the, with the proper food, as the composition, the size of the pellet, the amount of the food, or the frequency that we are giving this food. So right now everything is going right, we have our fish inside of our water, we are feeding them, but we, we think that we can improve a little bit the welfare. So we are thinking in using enrichment for them. First of all, the enrichment should be useful and not get lost in doing strange things, like, like this paper that shows there is no effect between Mozart music and the physiology we, of Cyprinus Capio. Maybe if they have used uh, Beethoven or Queen, they find out some kind of a relation, but I think it has no really sense. So the enrichment uh, should decrease or helps the fish 
uh, to get used to the facility and reduce the, the stress. Also, uh, has to increase or will increase the interspecific or, in, or intraspecific relations, so they will be much, much better. If, uh, as a retracement, we can use like food that is really useful in, in fish, or use other kinds of enrichment that refugees, substrates, uh, shallow nets, or plants. They should be uh, easy to clean and they don't have to interfere in the experimental procedure. So, just keeping in the fish way, we have to forget the toys animals, or sorry, the toys and the mammals enrichment. We have to use the, the fish ones. So to, <clears throat> we, are, we have our, our happy fish inside our facility, but we have to make a, a procedure. So we have to handle the fish and we don't know how to handle. It. So first of all, the most important thing is avoid handling them. Okay, but I have to handle because I have to make my procedure. So afterwards, we, we have to touch him. We have to fish them with the slow movements of the net because they have the lateral line. We have to avoid removing the mucus or the scales, so we have to use a proper net, use gloves. Also, we have to use uh, wet materials that avoids uh, drying the fish and removing the mucus. And also uh, decrease the level of deshydratation. How we can cover the fish with a, a, a wet paper or something like that, that avoids the, the fish getting, getting dry. Also, if we have to, to change the, the fish from one water to another, which will acclimatate them, so the, the physiology will be adapted to the new conditions of the water. If the fish has to be in static tanks without flow, we should avoid feeding them because they are going to secrete uh, ammonia and the water quality is going to be decreased really fast. Also, we should know that vibrations and noise are really harmful for fish and they really get a stress about that. <clears throat> so if we get that stress fish, we should know what, which kind of actions are making this fish stressed. A stressed fish is not a happy fish, so it's not a welfare, it's not really well, so it's ma mainly in the on welfare side. So taking account, we have a stress factor as the water quality, so we have to take care of our water quality. And also we have another kind of factors as the physical ones, like handling handle them improperly, uh, making transports, uh, having too much light, uh, having noise or a lot of movements inside our facility. And another kind of factors that could stress our fish will be the biological ones. When I mean biological ones, we can see, we can think in what are the pathogens, okay? And also the interrelations between the fish and other fish. Also, the, if we have a lot of particles uh, flowing in our water, they will stress our fish. So if we got uh, stress fish, we have to decrease their stress, and we have many tricks uh, to, to do that. First of all, is avoiding them getting stressed, so we are, we are going to, to avoid fishing them. If we have to, to fish them, we are going to make it properly. Also, we can decrease a little bit the light, so they might get more quiet. They, we can also decrease the levels of oxygen. We can use the refugees and uh, other kind of enrichment. Another kind of, of trick is decreasing the water stress. The water stress is the energy that the, the fish needs to keep the osmo, osmo regulation. So if we get this, this difference between the cell osmotic pressure and the water osmotic pressure closer, we are going to decrease the energy that he needs to, to keep this balance. So uh, summarizing this, uh, is if we have a fresh water fish, we can increase a little bit the amount of salt in the water, so the, the fish will be much, much better. Also, if we have to make uh, different kinds of procedures, we can use anesthetics, 
but right now we don't know if they are really fine or they can make different kind of aggressions for the fish. So we have to, to take notice of this and also use the anesthetic only when we need. Avoid also the vibrations and noise. And another thing we, we should use is the eye meter. The eye meter is the things that you can measure by eye and you can't explain. This is usually when you work with fish, you should know that if I make this, the fish are better or not. I can explain, but I know it. So this is for me the eye meter and we are really used to, to use this, this eye meter. Another thing is depending on the species, some kind of tricks will act much better and other ones will, will be washed. So you must know your, your animal and your species. So we have to make our procedure and sometimes the procedure can make pain to the, to the fish. We know that the fish can feel pain because they have a brain structure uh, similar to, to us and also they have an opiate system. They can express in different ways uh, that, that they don't feel fine. So they can uh, uh, have anorexia or block their reproduction function or get darker or get uh, out of from the soul. Uh, the problem is that they can face in as, as the mammals and they cannot vocalize. So the level of empathy with them is going to be uh, lower than with other animals. So just keep in mind that we have to change uh, our mentality and try to think in, in a fish way. They can also learn and modify their behavior so uh, they can predict the painful stimuli and avoid them. But we have a, a real problem with, with the pain in fish because we are not sure which, way, which kind of path are they working with and exactly how is working the analgesic products of fish. Usually to test the analgesia in fish, uh, the acid test has been used, but it's just about the chemical uh, nociceptors. So some protocols with analgesic products has been set up nowadays, but uh, we still don't know if they are really useful or how useful are they. We, we know for sure that the morphine is, is active and has an analgesic uh, function, but we have to give like 30 times that, uh, than, than the mammals. So, to, in, in another way, just going on with the analgesia, we assume in fish that if we give them uh, anesthesia, they are going to have analgesia. In other kind of animals, this is forbidden, but in fish, we have almost no chance. So to give an, a, anesthesia to, to fish, we can choose between two kinds of, two main kinds of anesthetics, but mainly we are going to use like the breathing anesthesia. We are going to put the anesthesia inside of the water, and if this anesthesia has to be really long, we, we can use this kind of anesthesia machines that they're going to deliver the, the anesthetic and the oxygen to the oral cavity of the fish by a tooth. We can check the, the stage of anesthesia by checking the operculum movements and also remember if we are going to keep the, the fish a long time outside of the water, we should avoid the dislocation. So if we get a stress uh, fish, we should have uh, diseases with, uh, we have sick animals and we should know which kind of pathology do we have. We have different etology of the pathology, not just the pathogens that we are used to, to think always in that, that are the parasites, the bacteria, the virus, the fungus. We can have also uh, problems of, of with low, uh, low water quality that means that this is going not to be the proper ambient, so the fish is going to be really stressed and has real problems. Also, we have to take in account that the way that we are going to handle and just uh, the husbandry that they are going to have 
is going to be related with different kind of diseases. So we should avoid these diseases and control our, our health status of the facility, just making a proper design of the facilities. We should have quarantine so we can reach, uh, have new animals and isolate them, isolate the sick animals. Also, we should have a facility that is easy to clean and to disinfect, like also the, the floor and the, the life support system. We should have a proper uh, UV and ozone uh, dimension. We, have also, we can also uh, modify our routines to control much better uh, the quality of, of the health status. So we should reduce the movement of the people who is in contact with the animals. We should disinfect all the material, clean and, and remove all the waste that is present in the tanks, isolate the sick animals, and these kind of things that uh, help us to control the, the health status. We shall, we should have also a, a big control of, of the food and the water that is going around our facility. So if we have sick animals, we can check, we can check different different things, not just uh, not just uh, asking them or checking their health status. Just by a, by a, we can know what is going around in, in our facility. So we are used to use these kind of tables that summarize the, the main problems that the fish has. So we have to check the, the swimming, the how they swim, the respiration rate, the scales, the fins, the eyes, the feeding rates, also the reproduction. So these kind of things are really useful for the for, 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 for facility. <clears throat> so we have like a big idea that is, we must take in account to work with fish. So we are going just to give an example with the start of the fish research, that is in zebra fish. For example, imagine that you are called to work in a new facility and to work with zebra fish, and you have never worked with a zebra fish. So you get in panic and you say, well, zebra fish, what is that? So you have to check and look for what the referees are in, in, the, in the world. So you have to check different aspects as the biological requirements, the water parameters, the food, which kind of type, how amount, the amount, the frequency, which kind of density are we going to have, the flow of them, the breathing method, the cross contamination to keep our facility fine, these kind of things that we, we don't know. So we should have a bibliography review and we find that we have a lot of information about zebra fish and some papers are contradictory between, between them. So we have to choose some, some referees, but we have nowadays some guidelines that, they, that makes these kind of things much easier. So the guidelines are really useful and says what to do in different aspects of taking care of your fish. So finally, you get a proper idea that what is what are the requirements of for a fish for your zebra fish. So you get a lot of information that you have to uh, to put in practice in your facility. So you should have your proper design of the facility. The, nowadays we have the life support system for zebra fish are made by, with different brands by different companies and usually they are almost a standard. But you have to take in account different aspects of the facility, not just the life support system. You have to, to, to think what is going on if you have no, no power or different kind of energy plants. So in our case, we have double pumps in case that one uh, broads, we, we can ch ch uh, change really fast to another one. We have also a technical support that is 24 hours, seven days per week. And we have also uh, security guards that are going around our facility during the night and checking the critical points that are shown in the map. So they check really easily and if there is something going wrong, they will call us. Also, uh, if everything goes really, 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 really bad, 
we have set a density that allows us not to have flow during 24 hours and the, the fish will have no problems about oxygen. So you can find many, many examples of facilities. This is one, this is the, the third one that is like the most, uh, the most uh, knowledge uh, facility. But going, keeping going on, we, we have to decide different aspects of how we are going to handle our fish. So going to the density, we have many reference about density. We have no reference with the law, but we are, for example, as we are accredited by the ALAC, so we have recommendation of, of the ALAC, or we have other, other kinds of recommendations. So in our case, we, we decide to make different tests just to check which, was, uh, which one was the best uh, density. Finally, we, we decide to have uh, around 25 fish, adult, adult fish in, in a three liter tank. So almost like eight fish per liter, something like that, that will be increased a little bit. Uh, if you standardize your densities, it will help you to, to feed them properly and in a homogeneous way. Also, uh, the densities will, will have to be set up to give enough space to, to grow well uh, the fish. Also, you have to take in account that, that if you have high density, you will need more water flow, so you have to regulate these kind of things. Remember that the fish, the zebra fish, is a quiet fish that likes to be in quiet water, so he, he doesn't like really, uh, really high flows. Also, you have to define which kind of fish are going to be in the tank. Is going, there are going to be all males or that we are going to mix the, the genders. Uh, in our case, we, we have centralized all the nursery and hatchery tanks. So these tanks has a proper uh, different density and need uh, more control than, than the adult ones. So this way we, we have more, more control of the tanks. To know which kind of tank do we have, we are using different kind of stickers. <clears throat> so these are samples of which kind of trials do we have done to set up different kind of husbandry uh, items. So yes, going on with the breeding method, uh, we are going to use the bleaching protocol to eliminate the external pathogens. Uh, this uh, bleaching method is really useful for this kind of pathogens, but not for the vertical ones. So maybe we should find new disinfection methods and control the, the quality of the eggs. When they, uh, the eggs hatch, we have to evaluate our larvae to avoid the, the, the surprise with them, so we choose the, the striped ones. Uh, we are going to put these, these larvae in a petri dish with natural water. We don't have a fungus problems, so we avoid using embryo media. Uh, when the, the larvae has like uh, six days or seven days, we are going to put in, in a regular tank with a drop by drop flow and we are going to, to put uh, some tiny powder uh, on the surface that is made by spirulina. So this spirulina will be almost uh, all the time there and uh, this way the, the larvae are going to eat almost all the time. As soon as possible we are going to change this way of feeding to the archaemia that is more, more energetic and allows to grow faster. Uh, when they are growing, we are going to increase a little bit the, the flow, so they are going to be almost related with the uh, development stage. Uh, so here is like a, a summarize of what we are doing with, with our feeding protocols. So we have different menus in here. As you can see, we have the different stickers that are going to say which kind of menu is going to eat the zebra fish. So we are starting with, with the, this tiny powder made by spirulina. Afterwards, we are going to move to 
to Archemia that as soon as possible we are going to change to dry food. Uh, the first stage of dry food will be especially uh, energetic and they are different from the adult ones. Uh, when, meanwhile they are developing, we are going to change the food to a bigger size and afterwards to the adult ones. So this way we are going to, to change, to adapt our way of feeding and the, way, and, and the food, the kind of food to the uh, uh, development of the zebrafish. We have also a an, an special sticker that is what we call happy fish, that is an extra, an extra uh, meal made uh, usually of frozen food that increase the reproduction rates. So if we have uh, fish that are under reproduction, we are going to have this uh, romantic food in the morning. At the end of the day, all the fish will, will eat archemia because they love and it's a kind of enrichment and also improves the, the, the reproduction rates. We should take in account that we are in, in, in a really humid lab so we have to keep our food really dry. <clears throat> we are using the, the artemia uh, just like food and also as, as an enrichment. This artemia is, is really uh, high PUFAS and UFAS concentration, so it will help to increase the reproduction rate. Uh, remember that we have the, the happy fish sticker that will increase the, the amount of, of PUFAS and UFAS that we are giving to our, to our fish. We have a protocol for, for artemia and we have a special facility and tank uh, to, to grow up this one. So using light food is really a good thing because you have happy fish, but it's also um, a bad point because we can introduce some pathogens inside our facility. So we have to know that, for example, paramethium can increase the transmission and the effectivity of mycobacterium. And in the other hand, for example, for example, the tube FX, that is a frozen food, could have some pseudocapillaria so X that has uh, that causes a lot of problems in our facilities. So to keep our facility fine and avoid uh, contaminations, we should design them properly we, and we should design our routines too. So just summarizing what, what we are doing in our facility, we are controlling the access by card and using a specific clothes. So the people that's going inside has to remove or to put a, a special cloth so it will decrease the amount of people that is going inside your facility. Also, we are labeling all the material and each, each system has a proper color and each material is going to be marked for each system. So we avoid this way, crossing in all the materials and it will be much easier to control these kind of things. Also, pre are working with, with the fish, we are going to disinfect or hands with a so alcohol soap that has a high spectrum. Also, we are going to pass through a food bath that is going to disinfect, to disinfect our, our, our shoes. We are using a separate quarantine that allows us to uh, isolate six animals and also to receive uh, the new animals. Uh, we have to take in account that in uh, aquatic animals we have a, a, a natural barrier that is the eye water and that means that the pathogens can go through this barrier except the fungus but if they go through, if they get inside of the water, the water is going to act not as a barrier, it's going to act as a vector. So remember if you put your pathogen inside you are going to have many many problems. So if you have problems, you have to check your health status and avoid uh, uh, having more infection and trying to remove these, these pathogens from your facility. So you can uh, have different controls, make uh, certificates, uh, use PCR tools 
or just uh, trying to make a history of the of the strain or the different facilities that you have uh, received new animals. So it's really important in the zebrafish facility to have a, a high reproduction rate. So you should improve your reproduction or your crossing methods. So you reduce all the manipulation and all the injuries that you are making to your fish when meanwhile you are catching. We are trying to design like as an automatic recollector for eggs. So we should avoid uh, fishing them and manipulating them. So we will also re reduce the, the work for us and for the, the cleaning area. So this way, in this way, we will have the same amount of eggs, but uh, much more, much less uh, work. Also, another way of improving the welfare is going to be making uh, reducing the number of animals. And you can reduce the number of animals just freezing the, the sperm of them, so you can handle much better the high number of, of strains that you have uh, in your facility. Uh, we are setting up this, this protocol, and the main thing is that you don't need a big infrastructure, you just need liquid nitrogen, dry ice, and a magnificent glass. You will need a partner to work with and always do it in the mornings because it's related with the reproduction in zebrafish. <clears throat> also, you can use anesthetics, as we said before. And right now we are thinking in using another kind of anesthetics because there are many papers that say that the tricaine, that is the most commonly anesthetic used in zebra fish, is really a aversive for, for animals. So we have many kinds of anesthetics and we are going to try them and just check if they work better than the tricaine or not. Finally, we can think that we have everything done, but there are more animals going around our facility. These animals are humans and are really related with animal welfare. First of all, we have the technician, that is the people who is every day in contact with the animals. So we must train them and define the things that they should check for animal and welfare. So it's really important to have a fluent communication with them and to make some uh, health reports uh, to know which kind of problems do you have in your facility. Also, on the other hand, you have the researchers that sometimes are not sensible to animals and sometimes they are not properly trained for working with them. So you have to train in them and if it doesn't work, you can always uh, go to the law and punish, punish them. So I hope you find out this presentation useful and will help you uh, to work better with fish or just know a little more about fish. And I would like to give thanks to all of you for paying attention, uh, to all the animal facility staff of the PRBB, especially for the aquatic ones by getting wet with me. To, Ma to Tomás García by getting dirty with me and to Sito Padreos to teaching me to swim. So best pieces for all and many thanks to all of you. Bye bye. Okay, uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Juan, for that informative presentation. And I particularly like the misspelling at the end and your last slide on um, best fishes. Uh, that was pretty original, so that was great. Before we get started on the Q&A session, I would like to remind our audience how to submit questions. You can submit questions by typing them in the Q&A box, which can be found by clicking on the green Q&A button at the lower left of the presentation window. 
we'll try to answer as many questions as we can. So our first question is, um, let's see. Okay, the first question comes from Patricia Alderson from Lakehead University. What are some good examples of enrichment for fin fish species? The examples, <clears throat> uh, you can use many ways of enrichment depending on the species. Mm, you can use plants that will be set at the surface. You can set plants at the bottom of the tank. You can leave like five tubes. Uh, in several fish, we are not used to, to use this kind of enrichment. We are used just to, to have a proper handling of the population and to give them a tasty food and to develop the, the way of um, attacking other animals with their chemia and these kind of things. But for soul fish, usually we don't use this kind of enrichment. It's more for lonely animals. The next question comes from Dr. Dan Rothen from the University of Miami. By the way, Dan Rothen is an expert on fish and it's really up and coming expert on the, in the field and anyone who wants to talk to him in particular, his last name is spelled R-O-T-S-N Thomas H-E-N Dan Rothen from University of Miami. Feel free to contact him uh, I have used him in the past and I have asked him questions and he's very uh, versed in the field and also he's given a presentation, last presentation of the day. So Dan Ruffin's question is, besides zebrafish, what are the most common fish species used in your facility? Uh, right now in our facility we are working just with zebra fish. We have also another aquatic animals. We we have Xenopus laeris and a few years ago we have also axolotls. Right now I'm just working with zebra fish, but I used to work in a public aquarium, so I handle many many species. Okay, the next question, I guess it comes from me. <laughs> I have seen a number of fish facilities that have the, the pump to the tanks located in the same room where the fish are housed. When I've asked investigators about uh, this possibly being stressful to the fish, the response I get is that the fish get used to it. In some cases, uh, I've seen these pumps and I heard them, they're quite loud. Do you have any thoughts on how to respond to these investigators that say, it's okay to have those pumps that are loud in the rooms. Okay, I think it's much better to have your pumps outside of, of your facility in another in another room, but sometimes you don't have the chance to, to do that. Also, the single racks usually has the the pump uh, over the, the system, so uh, the the fish really get used to to an ambient, and it's really important to avoid the vibrations, but the suddenly ones. If you have a constant vibration usually the fish is going to, to process like, okay, it's fine. So they get used to that and usually you don't have any problems. If you are going to have suddenly noises, maybe it's better to have a, a, a low sound behind that so they don't get so stressed. So also it's much better for, for the staff having the, the pumps outside because the noise of the pumps are really harmful and they are not really fine for you. So. 
It depends on what you have in your facility. In our case, we have the pumps inside of the facility. So it has no, we don't have any problem about that. The next question comes from Jesse Eddington from the University of Alberta. Do you have a food delivery system or tool that is specific for the zebra fish racks? When feeding powder, sorry about that, I, I lost it. When feeding powder food, when feeding powder food to the small recirculation tanks, there is often a mess created from spilled food on the lids of the tanks. And this mess can then spoil, spoil if it builds up. Uh, I don't know if you understand that well the, the question, but <clears throat> I think uh, you were asking about the, the tiny mess that you have uh, with the fries and with the with the larvae, uh, if they get clothed out with the powder. We, we are using the, the, the ceramic crown that is just a little amount, but we are using also to deliver the, this, this uh, ceramic crown is a mess that helps us to reduce the amount and give in a bigger space. So if you have problem uh, because the mess is getting cloud, maybe you should change the the tank is much better. So just passing the, all the water with the fries from one tank to another, always put uh, at the bottom of the new tank uh, some water so they don't get crushed with the bottom of the tank. Usually we don't have problems with that because uh, it's like a routine. So we, we know that if we spend like 20 days with this tank, everything goes, well, goes fine. If we keep like 25, we can have problems. So it's just to, to figure out with your return and check it. But usually we don't have problems about that because you are, we are using just a little amount of, of this powder. The next question comes from Daniel or Daniel uh, Wasilu from University of Winnipeg. What factors contribute to egg binding conditions in Medaka? Sorry, uh, I, I never worked with Medaka, so I can ask about this question. I'm, I'm so sorry. I just work with uh, marine fish and, and the zebra fish, so I, I never use Medaka's immune facility. Sorry. Next question is from Karthik. But Nahan from Tanuvas, can diseased but healed zebrafish be used for further research purposes? Zebrafish can be used for, for almost all the purpose for research. Uh, there are studies about brain, heart, related with biomedical, also with pathology, pathology of humans, pathology of fish, uh, many, many kind of applications. It's really easy also to, to generate the strains so you can find a model for almost all the things. Right now, the, the big issue for, for Thera fish, I think, is taking account for toxicology studies that will increase the, the number of facilities and the importance of zebra fish in the research world. But I think the zebra fish is really useful for, for research any kind of, of things. Okay, the next question comes from Adriana Perea, Unidad Académica de Medicina Veterinaria. 
and I'm going to trans translate because the question is in Spanish. Congratulations for your presentation, doctor. I learned a, a, an awful lot. Uh, since I have only uh, handled these species, uh, simple pets, and I have uh, focused on small species, I have found uh, it, it seems very interesting, uh, the whole aspect of area of euthanasia that you mentioned. Since the industry, the fishing industry, uh, that's an issue as far as well-being of the animals. The MS, I'm not sure what the MS stands for, is used in amphibians, oh, uh, methasulfonate, MS-222, I think that's what she means for euthanasia of fish, uh, is used in amphibians, but I have never been able to find it in Mexico. Uh, why have uh, why have they decided to discontinue this? I'm about to start a doctorate degree at the University of Alabama, Birmingham, and I hope to meet you one of these days. Thank you very much. I don't know if I understand the, the question properly, but I think it, she was asking about a trichain and the use to, to, uh, for euthanasia. In our case, we, first of all, we, we start uh, euthanizing the animals with tricaine, but uh, we, we went to, to a conference where Zoltan and Vargas was, and he presented uh, the new protocol by shock, uh, thermic shock and we find out this this protocol is much better because we don't release any drugs to the to the media and also for fish is really fast and really secure we don't have any problems with that that doesn't happen with amphibians so in amphibians in our case we decide not to use a uh, as euthanasia protocol we are using doletal, diluated, so it's much safer for, for the animals and you don't have any, any kind of problems with that. Uh, I don't know how do, do, do you can find uh, tricaine in Mexico, but here in Spain we don't have any problem and I think Sigma Eldridge uh, has it. Well, this concludes this presentation by Juan. Uh, again, thank you, uh, Juan, for such an interesting presentation. And thank, I would like to thank the audience also for the great questions and for participating in this event. Today's webcast will be available for on-demand viewing through August 2015. You will receive an email from LabRoots alerting you when this webcast will be available for replay. We invite you to forward that announcement to your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Well, thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.